Hey guys, so today's video is the long-awaited Battle of the Foundation Sticks video. I will be doing two videos like this, a drugstore one and a high-end one. Today is the drugstore version. I have six drugstore foundations to talk about today and review them. I feel like foundation sticks are like in right now and not necessarily with drugstore I notice, but a lot of high-end brands are coming out with their own foundation sticks. So I thought it would be cool to put a bunch together and compare them to each other. And then I thought it would be cool to do that with the drugstore foundation sticks as well. I'm not gonna go in any specific order, but I am gonna categorize them. Like the first two I'm gonna share with you, I would say they're better for oily skin. Then the other two I'm gonna share with you are good for like normal skin. And then the last two I'm gonna share with you are better for dry skin. So there's a foundation stick for everyone here. I thought it would be helpful if you saw each individual foundation just on my skin with no other makeup on so you can see how it sits on top of the skin and I know a lot of you guys prefer a brush over a beauty blender or a beauty blender over a brush so I did half of my face using a damp sponge and I did the other half of my face using a brush this brush right here. I don't know what it's called but I know it's from Tarte and I'm an idiot and I used the same brush to apply each foundation on my face in the demo. So I'm totally sorry about that, but I did spray some Cinema Secrets brush cleaner. Every like two foundations, I would clean it with Cinema Secrets brush cleaner. But for this side of my face, I did use a different damp sponge each time. So there's that. I do wanna mention really quickly, I always use a primer underneath my foundation, whether it's the first time I'm using it, or doing a review, doesn't matter, I always use a primer. So for each demo, I do have on the Glossier Priming Moisturizer underneath, just because it's a like solid, good primer, it's very moisturizing, and I find that it sits really well underneath my foundations, so I just use my trusty old Glossier Primer. So the first foundation I wanna talk about is the Revlon Photo Ready Insta Fix Foundation Stick. It has an SPF of 20 and it is $13.99. This one has really, really great reviews on the Ulta website, but personally for my skin type, it just did not work for me. This is the only one out of the bunch that I was like, ooh, I don't ever want to put this on my face again. I would say this would be perfect for you if you have oily skin because on me, it just really emphasized all my dry skin. I have very dry skin, as I've said a hundred times in the past, but if you're new to my channel, I have dry skin. And every time I try applying this with a beauty blender, it just does not work. It looks really patchy and it's really hard to blend. Like, this foundation is pretty matte and it just does not blend well with a beauty blender. I would highly suggest using a brush if you're gonna use this. It just buffs out way easier with a brush, in my opinion. I find that to be the case with a lot of foundation sticks. With regular liquid foundations, most of the time I will prefer a beauty blender, but with foundation sticks, I always gravitate towards a brush. Just for me and my skin type, it just sat on top of my skin. It didn't blend very well. It blended out a lot better on the side with the brush, but even then, I just didn't like like how it sat on my skin. So definitely check this out if you have oily skin. It has really good reviews on Ulta. And one really good thing I did find with this foundation is it lasts a really long time on my skin. Maybe because it is matte, but it did a really good job of staying in place. The only thing I did notice though is that it started to break up a lot around my nose. Like after a few hours of wearing this foundation, it was just like coming off on my nose. And I feel like it was emphasizing my dry skin more and more as the day went on, but that was really just around the nose area. It's not tacky to the touch. Like you don't have to set this. You can if you want to, but you don't have to, which that I really do like. The shade selection isn't the best, but it's definitely not the worst out of this bunch here. They have nine colors, but they don't have anything for very, very deep skin. Skin tones, which I totally hate. Why do companies do that? But compared to the other foundations I'm gonna share with you, the shade selection isn't the worst. In the demo of these videos, it looks like I'm applying a lot. Well, actually, I am applying a lot, and a lot of the times, I go over with a second layer just to see if it's buildable. And this one, for me, isn't buildable because it is so matte, but I would say it's like a medium coverage. Next up is the Maybelline Fit Me Shine Free Foundation Stick. It says it's for combination skin, and I totally agree with that. I would say this would work for you if you have normal skin or oily skin or something in between. This one is different in the sense that it's like a gel stick foundation. It also has like this little dot in the middle of the foundation that's supposed to like control your oils. It's what helps mattify the skin. And I totally agree with the claims of this foundation. It goes on creamy and it 
it has a powdery finish which I think it does this is a foundation that doesn't need to be set in my opinion it's not tacky to the touch which I really like but it isn't as drying as the Revlon one I didn't have trouble blending this one out with a beauty blender the way I did with the Revlon one I find it blends really well with a beauty blender and it also blends really really well with a brush I prefer a brush with this but you could go either way with this one I would say this also has a medium coverage I find that to be the case with a lot of these foundations but this one is buildable in my opinion I did go over it a couple times in certain areas that I wanted more coverage and I like it it's pretty good I'm in the shade classic ivory 120 oh I forgot to tell you but in the Revlon foundation stick I'm in the shade 120 vanilla <laughs> 120 120 the shade selection is also not the best with this one there are eight shades only and it lasts actually a decent amount of time on my skin I like the wear time the only thing I notice is in between my eyebrows, it starts to break up after a few hours. I don't know if it's because it's a little bit more mattifying, so it clings to the dryness. But right here in between my eyebrows and around my nose, that's where it starts to break up first. But again, nothing like the Revlon one. This one is also cheaper than the Revlon one. It is $8.99, but like on the Ulta website, people prefer the Revlon one. So I mean, it's... Foundation is so personal because we all have different skin types. It's, it's crazy. Okay, so this guy right here, I would say it can work for any skin type because it doesn't really lean dewy or like super matte either. This is the Physicians Formula Super BB All-in-One Balm Stick. So technically, it's not a foundation. It's not labeled as a foundation. It's more of kind of like a BB cream. And I like this one. I actually think this one's really good. I don't like the color of it. I'm in the shade light, but it's like not really my shade. It's a little bit too pink. It has a neutral undertone, but I'm a little bit warmer than this shade. This one is more on the pricey side. It's $12.99, but Physicians Formula is known to be a little bit pricier. I don't love this one with a beauty blender, though. I find that when I try to blend it out, it is a little bit more patchy, but I would say it gives you kind of like a satin finish, and I definitely prefer the way it blends out with a brush. The beauty blender kind of takes away coverage, and I found that I had to really apply like a whole second layer with this in order to get the coverage I wanted. I mean, it is a beauty balm. It's not supposed to have like all this coverage but I found that with a brush I got more coverage so I would definitely say go with the brush on this one I think it gives buildable coverage like you could definitely build it up it is still a light coverage but I, I like it I think it's really nice it isn't as matte as the other two foundations I talked about but it's not as dewy as the other ones I will talk about either it has a very natural finish to it which I really like it is just a little bit tacky when you touch your face with your fingers so I would go ahead and set it if you have very dry skin you can get away with not setting it at all the one huge I'm talking like huge major downside to this product is there's like two colors I think there's like two or three colors, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I mean come on positions formula You're a great brand you need to your your shade selection sucks And it's not just for this. It's for everything. They do not get it right when it comes to shades and I'm sorry I love you. I truly do I get it together. If someone wanted to buy this in the store, they're either light or light medium. And that's just like not how it works. There are darker skin tones. There are even lighter skin tones. There are a hundred other skin tones. If you are one of the two shades, then I think it is a pretty good, quick, out the door, everyday, light coverage kind of thing. Next stick foundation is one from NYX. This is the NYX Cosmetics Mineral Stick Foundation. I'm in the shade light medium and I really, really, really like this one. I love the shade selection. They have like 15 different shades to choose from, which is amazing, especially compared to the other ones I just previously talked about. So in terms of variety, NYX definitely takes the cake with this one. Now this one, compared to the other ones I've spoken about, I actually prefer the way it blends out with a beauty blender. Most stick foundations, I like how they blend out with a brush but this one I actually prefer the beauty blender it has a very beautiful dewy finish perfect if you have dry skin and I just feel like when I blend it out with the brush it kind of sits on top of the skin versus with the beauty blender it really just makes it sink right into the skin and look really natural and I also found I don't know if it's just me but I found that when I used the brush it emphasized my pores more than when I used the beauty blender so just keep that in mind maybe I'm crazy but that's just the way I feel once you're done blending this out it is a little bit tacky when you put your fingers to your face that's usually the the case with dewy foundations so I would definitely a hundred percent set this one but once you set it it looks so so pretty I would say this has a light to medium coverage definitely buildable to be honest I haven't found a foundation stick at the drugstore that has extreme full coverage I love how it lasts on my skin as well it doesn't break up weird it fades really nicely this one costs $9.99 and I really really like it 
This next one um, is pretty good. I don't like it nearly as much as I like the NYX one, but it's not bad. This is from Flower Beauty, and this is their Skin Cognito Stick Foundation. It has a very emollient texture to it, so I do feel like if you have any oiliness to your skin, you won't really like it, but it is very, very hydrating. I would say it works either or. I think it works really well with a beauty blender, and it also works really well with a brush. Like I would definitely consider this a light coverage foundation, but it is buildable. You can get a medium coverage if you build it up. This one is very tacky to the touch. You 1000% are going to want to set it. And it looks really beautiful. It looks really natural. It's just it doesn't last that long. Like it doesn't last as long as the other ones. It kind of breaks down quicker than the other ones I spoke about. But I don't think it's bad. I do like this one more than the Revlon one. And she has a total of 5 shades in her line, which I don't like. I mean, I think there should be more shades, but at least it's not as bad as the Physicians Formula ones. I feel like this is also a really good foundation for every single day. When you don't want too much coverage, but you want your skin to look nice and fresh and dewy and natural, this is a really nice one to go for. And it retails for $8.98. If you don't know, you can get Flower Beauty at Walmart exclusively. Okay, and then the last one, I think it is my personal favorite. I don't know what it is about it, but I just, I really like this one. This is the e.l.f. Moisturizing Foundation Stick. I'm in the shade Nude, and it's the foundation I'm wearing on my face right now. There are only three colors to choose from. Such a bummer. I would love it if they expanded their range and brought out more foundation sticks because I really like this one. This is definitely one for you if you have dry skin. Even very dry skin, it is a very dewy finish. The packaging reminds me a lot of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it reminds me a lot of that. I actually love the packaging on this one. It's my favorite. I don't know if it's just because it's like a chubby one, it's like fatter and shorter, and it's black and sleek. I think the other ones look a little bit less expensive, and this one just looks nice and modern. I don't know. I'm crazy but I like packaging. This one's awesome for a ton of different reasons. It's very dewy, so it works well with my skin, and it looks so natural and so beautiful. This one has really, really good coverage. It can go from medium to full if you build it up. I actually also prefer this one with a beauty blender. I think it looks even dewier and even prettier. I love the brush as well. It has a slight tacky finish. Even though it is dewy, it's not as tacky as the flower one. So if you have extremely dry skin, you can get away with not setting it, but I would set it anyway because if you don't, sometimes when you put on bronzer or blush or anything on top, it will stick to that certain spot. So I would definitely set it anyway. It does start to break down around my nose after a few hours. I don't I don't exactly know why, but I look past that because I literally like everything else about it. It has shea in it, vitamin E, avocado. It even has like aloe in it to really hydrate the skin. I don't know. It's definitely my favorite out of all of them, but that's just my personal experience. Shade selection, not very good. They need to fix that. And this one is also the cheapest, is it? This is six bucks. So yeah, I think it is the least expensive one. And it happens to be the one I like the most. So yeah, that completes this video. These were my thoughts on these six foundation sticks from the drugstore. I'm not gonna lie, I think that high-end brands make better foundation sticks, but I do have other liquid foundations at the drugstore that I prefer over these. So when it comes to the drugstore, I think that they do liquid foundations better than stick foundations. But yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with a lot of these. Leave me a comment down below if there was a drugstore foundation stick I might have missed. Maybe it's one that you love and I didn't include. But yeah, I love doing this video for you guys. I can't wait to film the high-end version of this video, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, that completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So for all of the, so for each, but compared to the other foundations I'm gonna share with you, the shade, but compared to the other foundations I'm gonna share with you, the shade, why do I keep saying six as well? So I have six, six. I don't know what it's called, but I know it's from Target. What? Not Target. Tarte. The Sage. The Sh. Oh my god. <laughs>